Hi, my name is Jason Morgan. I'm a wildlife artist. Welcome into my studio. And most of you probably know me from for painting oils or alkyd oils. And I've been doing those for probably around about 20 years now. Um, I've done other mediums as well. I've done a little bit with graphite. I've done a little bit with white pastel. I've done a little bit with uh, charcoals, usually on black paper as well. So I've dabbled, you know, a little bit in other mediums, but I'm mainly known for alkyd oils or oil painting and the wildlife. So I tried to diversify a little bit as well and around about probably 15 years ago I had a little dabble with pastel so I just bought a very basic set, I bought some decent paper or what I thought was decent paper, tried to do a one or two wildlife areas in it and a complete disaster, it just didn't work at all, it was just really really frustrating for me and I put it to the side and I've never done anything with it since. But Recently I've seen, especially on my on Instagram, I've seen lots of people doing some real detailed wildlife art with pastels and also portraits as well. And I thought perhaps it'd be time to have another go. And I got hold of some certain, you know, supplies. I got um I could see that lots of people were using either pastel mat or vela paper. So I got hold of what I thought would work. And I had a quick go and yesterday I did this uh, leopard's eyes and it all worked out really well. It was completely different than when I first tried pastels and I could see then that a lot was dependent on the materials with this. Now I've tried coloured pencils in the past and I think I didn't really get on with them that well and the reason is when you're painting with oils you generally go from um, dark to light and when you do coloured pencils it's kind of the reverse of that because it's more difficult to get a light on top of a dark so it really didn't work out well in my head that I was trying to switch from you know reverse techniques all the time but with pastel it's very very similar to painting so you can work dark to light and you can overlay the light on top and that makes painting or drawing fur really really much more straightforward so when I posted that little picture I just showed you on my Facebook channel I had lots and lots of people asking me what paper I was using, what pencils I was using, what pastel sticks I was using, how I was sharpening them, lots and lots of questions. Now I'm, a, I'm an absolute beginner so I've painted for many years but I'm an absolute beginner with pastels. I don't know much but I do know what's worked for me so far and I can share that with you so that hopefully if you're trying to get into pastels or you want to restart them because you've had a bit of frustration at the beginning if we all get the same type of materials we can learn about pastels together I'm not bound by any companies saying about papers or pencils nothing whatsoever I bought all this material myself so I don't owe anyone anything so it's all my unbiased opinion and some things could be right and some things wrong but I know what worked to create this uh, little leopard painting so let's have a look see how I did it and see the materials that I'm using earthy tone to it and I'm putting in the darker areas of the fur so real di deep down in between the highlight section that's what I'm thinking of and look I'm actually applying it in the direction of fur growth again and the reason I'm worried about doing that or I'm concerned about doing that in the right direction is because little bits of these marks the underdrawing perhaps even bits of the pastel mat itself are going to show through in slight areas so they've got to be in the right area uh, or in the right direction otherwise you can imagine if I was going in the wrong direction here now it would just look a complete mess and it wouldn't give any shape to the actual animal itself now on the bridge of the nose it's very little short hairs and they come down the nose so they're facing downwards and you see that my strokes are curling away from the eye and starting to go down and as with oil painting and as I've said before it's better to go too dark at this stage than too light because we're going to build lighter tones upon it and the less we need to go back into the dark the better really so I'm getting nice and dark the pastel mat is really taking this pastel stick into its surface so you can see I haven't got any crumbly um, dusty bits on the surface so nothing to blow away and with the cheaper papers you'd find you'd have lots and lots of 
pastel dust on surface and you'll be blowing it or brushing it away and it'd just be a nightmare to try and get rid of it because I'm using this paper flat. Now I didn't think I'd get away with that. I thought I'd have to have it at about a 45 degree angle at least if not vertically and perhaps if I was doing something really big perhaps it would be beneficial. But it's a little bit easier to video when I've got it flat I can get the light into the side, the camera is looking straight down, my head is usually out of the way and I can sit much more comfortably like this when I'm doing my painting videos and I need to have them upright. I've really got to sit in an awkward position to try and stay away from the camera viewing angle so that you guys to get to see the best, the best view, uninterrupted view with it. But even with it flat like this, I'm getting no problems with dust whatsoever. So continuing that blocking in. So that's kind of the second layer really on that area. I did that um, more of a sandy look down first, the mid-tone. These are a bit more of the dark sections. And this is not speeded up, so you can see I'm working quite quickly because I know it's not like with coloured pencils where everything pretty much is critical. I know I can adjust things. So, clean finger, fair amount of pressure, just blending that out. And look how, because those lines, those marks were done in the fur direction that was required, look how wonderful and soft this looks. It really does pastel lends itself to doing wildlife so much more than any other medium that I've used and that includes my oils. It's so easy to get this soft appearance and that's what you want with lots of fur. You know the majority of fur. It's got a softness to it and that's just as critical as getting those colours right. So what you see in there is, is a good example of that middle section now so it's had two layers and then the right eye that's finished has probably had another two layers of highlights and re-establishing the darks on top. So this section here is going to be lighter but it's got a bit of a blue tinge to it so I'm just lightly feathering that with pencil. That's the difference between a good drawing and something that a beginner normally does. They don't see all the fine and subtle colour changes so keep your eye open for those in in your reference when you're doing your work. If you're looking for more art resources I really think I've got you covered. I've got a brand new Patreon channel and on there every month I bring out exclusive full length videos for you and also exclusive reference photos with line art. I've got a dedicated website for tutorials, that's jasonmorgan.co.uk, lots of full length videos, some of them up to 8 hours long on there, and there's also ebook tutorials as well if you'd like to read rather than see the videos. I've got a dedicated reference photo website, wildlifeart-online.com, there's over 900 images on there, all for you to use copyright free, and they all come with the Easy Trace line art as well. And don't forget my YouTube channel is growing all the time. If you can possibly subscribe, then you know you're guaranteed not to miss out on any new videos and updates. See you all again real soon.